Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And on today's episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. Monday, I had a situation where I had to stay at work, you know, a little longer than I wanted to. And so um, we didn't have our Ravens Daily for Monday. And so I put on my community tab, if you had any questions, to ask those questions there, and I would answer them in video form. Well, here is now the video form. So I'm going to go through those questions. I think it was about nine or ten of them. Answer them. And um, see if I can give you the best answer, well, not see if I can, give you the best answer I can based off my knowledge and information of what's going on. So first up, first question is from, from my guy P. Brownie. Uh, shout out to you. I, I know we've been talking in email about different things, so to let you know you're still, you're still on my mind, my guy. Um, do you believe the offense and the defense will improve once everyone is healthy? Yes. We've been playing lights out defensively with the injuries. So there's, you know, we've done what we've done the past two weeks with no Marlon. And Marlon is by far, you know, I'm not going to say by far our best defensive player. He, he not by far, but he be our best DB. That's what I was going to come at. Um, PQ and Rose is playing lights out right now. But when Marlon comes back, I think Rock's, Rock's playing, but I don't know how healthy he is. Uh, or Darius just went out, but when he comes back, he was playing good. Um... Our defense is going to be, we're doing this with some key people out. Marcus Williams is out. Marlowe's out. That's two of your four on the back end that's all-star, pro bowl, maybe all-pro caliber. And we're doing this, you know, with, we're just piecing it together, piecing it together. And Mike's doing a heck of a job. Shout out to Mike McDonald for the job he's doing with defense. Amazing so far. It was, a, it was good last year. The offense just wasn't helping them out. Now the offense is trying to help them out a little bit. So the offense helping them out will make them look a lot better. Second question says, can you break down a D-line play, run defense overall? Well, uh, and this is uh, Gamer, let's see, Game Roy. Game Roy, I, yesterday I did a about an hour and 10 minute video with nothing but defense. And so in part of that defense, it was breaking down the secondary, breaking down defensive front, and breaking down the play of the linebackers. Did I extensively go just the line? No, I didn't. So I didn't single out certain individuals. But if you go check that video out yesterday, it was about an hour-long defensive hangout. <laughs> we just talked about the defensive play. I think Jadavian Clowney is the guy I have on the thumbnail. So if you see that video in my list, go ahead and check that out, and that will kind of get you some answers to your defense, your defensive question. He said, also the coverage on Chase. This is from Game Roy also. Also the coverage on Chase. We felt like we shut him down pretty well. Well, I think the scheme more so is how we shut down Chase. A lot of times, and this is going back to this year and last year, Chase would kind of have two people assigned to him, so to speak. Uh, he necessarily don't know where they're coming from because even with watching yesterday's film, there were a lot of times we were in the too high umbrella where you think it'd be cover two or cover four, and it'd be man. Or we give a man look and it'll rotate to cover two. So Mike McDonald is doing a great job of showing one thing pre-snap and then doing something else post-snap. He's doing an excellent job of doing that. So again, shouts out to, to McDonald. Next question comes from Lauren, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lorcan Cook. Hey, Coach, do you think the O-line can continue being this good or as good as against the Bengals while still missing players? Same thing with the O-line. And no shade to Linderbaum or Ronnie, but the O-line looked better yesterday, well, Sunday, rather than the week before. So week two, they looked a lot better than week one. Now, and I think the Bengals' defensive front was better than the Texans. I do. DJ Reader, Hendrickson, and Hubbard, I think those guys are better than what the Texans offer up there with the exception of maybe Will Anderson. So why, why did they look better? One thing for me is I think Ronnie's not fully healthy because Macari looked a lot better than Ronnie did uh, in his play. And, you know, no shade on Ronnie. He actually he got hurt in that first game, but Macari looked better than Ronnie. And we all know Macari's not – the greatest of old linemen, he's serviceable because he can play pretty much every position on the old line. But some of the things that, that McCarry did in the game Sunday, it just looked better than Ronnie Stanley. So I, my only thing is Ronnie's not 100% healthy. Where did he re-aggravate it or re-injure it before that happened? I'm not sure. But um, we were hoping to get all pro running back. And I thought that all pro running was gone. I thought we'd just get pro bowl running. 
But right now, he didn't look like either. But he's hurt, and we all know what Ryan is capable of. So I think once he gets healthy and gets back in the fold, he'll be, you know, a Pro Bowl caliber left tackle and, you know, beat our rock up front. Next question comes from the sand. He says, does Lamar's passing this year look entirely better than ever before? Through two games, he's top three in percentage completion so far as well. So I was I would say the spacing helps Lamar out. In times in the past, and I'm probably gonna lose my place when I set this phone down. In the past, we've had a bunch of receivers right on top of each other, and so the reads were hard. You, you look to the left and you might have two guys within five yards and then you have a defender sitting in front of them. So that guy's defending both of them. Now, when you look at some tape that I put out early in the week and last week, the spacing, especially go check my Twitter. I put a bunch of clips on Twitter. The spacing from the receivers are, are clear. He can look left and see, oh, this guy's covered. I can come here to the next read. He's open or covered and I can come to the third because nobody's right on top of each other. And then if you cover all that, he can take off running. So, his passing is easier. He did a great job in, what's this, 23? So I think 21, when he had all those passing yards early, but he was forcing stuff then. The, the calls weren't conducive to what he wanted to do. He was just making stuff happen on his own down the field. Now he has an actual system that constitutes lower level, intermediate, and deep throws. And he got competent receivers that can help him see other stuff. For example, the, the play with Zay Flowers. And I, put, I got that on Twitter, too. Uh, Zay ran a post early in the game where Rashad Bateman caught, caught the ball across the middle, and he was wide open. Came back to the sideline, told Lamar, hey, look, we call it again. You know, I'm going to be wide open. They called it again, but they didn't have a fourth receiver out there, so it looked like the second, the, the corner from the other side was able to come in and get in, but Zay still beat the safety on the same route. It was the same route, just different formation. Zay went up and made the catch, and that was a big play for, for Zay Flowers. So I think Lamar has it easier because, and I'm not saying he has an easy playing quarterback, that the concepts are better. They're more conducive to understanding who's open, who's not, check down, go to this read, the other. It's just, it's a completely different system and it's a lot easier on the quarterback. Next up, uh, do you think when Marlon Marcus get back, the defense will improve even more? Yeah, I, um, I mentioned that one earlier, so definitely they will improve on the back end when those two guys get back because they're all pro all-star pro bowl pro guys so i look forward to having them back and just putting this whole thing together because they still playing lights out without those two next up from druck he says do you think g rose passing system was premeditated which caused lamar not to succeed in tough games Druck, that's a great question and i think it was so basic a lot of what g Row was doing was some of the same stuff that i would teach on my level and i'm not coaching anymore but i'm a high school coach some of that stuff g Row had lamar doing was basically the same stuff we would have 15 16 17 year olds trying to do so i know what the uh, defenders in the nfl do i know how much film they watch i know how smart they are i know how fast they are i know how talented they are the same stuff that works on a high school level, man, I'm talking about a few, few key concepts that work, and I'll tell you one in a minute. But, but the same stuff that work on a high school level, not going to work on the, the NFL level. You got to have plays on top of plays on top of plays. You can have a base play, but you need seven or eight plays off that play. g had a base play, then he had another base play, and another base play, and he just ran them three base plays over and over, just with different formations. Nothing was re really ever built on top of each other. So you, he, we didn't have a jet sweep. And then we didn't come back and ha fake the jet sweep and maybe hand the ball off on inside zone. And we didn't have a jet sweep, fake it off on inside zone, Lamar half roll and hit a guy in the flex. Or we didn't fake a jet sweep and do a power read off of it or pop pass. We just, that's just five things I thought of off the top of my head. He's sitting in the office all day. Come on, bro. But... Let's not keep talk, uh, talking about him. He gone. Let's get on Monkey's train and hopefully Monkey succeed with what we got. Next up from uh, Victor. Why was our second string? Oh, we already talked about this one. Basically, why was our second string O-line so good in Cincinnati compared to our starters in Houston? And Victor, I addressed that one earlier. It's just, for some reason, they just played better. Um, now, I will say this. I'll go back to that. 
Mustafa didn't play as well as Lindebaum. Mustafa was covered up. No. I, let's just say Simpson played well. And Mustafa and Zyla played okay. I think Zyla had the worst game Sunday, which was surprising to me. Because he's normally the rock. He's normally the rock. But why did they play better? Uh, maybe just a, a second game in the system. Getting actual starter reps is not preseason. Because remember, McCarty didn't play in the preseason either. But like a few snaps. So none of the old linemen play other than Simpson. And McCarty played a very few snaps. So I guess it's them just, you know, getting back in the field of things with, with games. That's all I can think of. But they did look better than the week before. But I think the offense as a whole looked better. So it's not just the old line. Next, from Lauren Cook again. Lauren Can Cook again. Are you worried if OBJ is out for an extended period of time? I am not worried. Take your time, Odell. Get back. I am confident in... Bateman, I'm confident in Zay. Mark's back. Likely can do what he needs to do if he gets better opportunities. And Nelson Aguilar has surprised me in camp and the other day. So if Odell needs two, three weeks to get himself together and come back, you know, at 95, 100%, do it. I'm not worried at all. I'm not worried at all because you can stick likely out there in some slot situations and he can do just as well. He can do just as well. Lastly, we have uh, one from Rave Kingdom. He says, should our injured players sit out the next game against the Colts since the Colts are not that good and it gives our players time to rest and heal? I say no. You can never underestimate anybody. Trap games happen, and you don't need to lose any games that you should win in the AFC. The AFC is so loaded. Herbert, Allen, well, not Rodgers anymore, but uh, Mahomes, Burrow, I don't know how hurt he is or whatnot. Uh, it's a bunch of other quarterbacks that I'm probably forgetting about. But we can't afford to drop any game to any team, take anybody for granted. So sitting starters unless uh, sitting starters that's nicked up, mm, if they hurt, yeah. If they nicked up, they need to go. And then if we get a, a nice enough lead, then sit out. But don't take anybody for granted. Don't el underestimate any opponent. Go out there, play hard as you can, get the dub, and get up out of there. I think that's the last one. That's the last one. So, hey, this was fun to do. So, if you like this kind of video, uh, let me know. We can have one at least. We can have one a week to address your concerns and whatnot, especially for those that don't get a chance to call in on the live show when we have them. This is a way that I can address your concerns to you. So, again, I want to be a channel that gives back to the people that support me, and this is a way of doing that. So, I thank you for submitting questions, everybody that submitted one. And what I'll do is I'll go back in there, and um, I don't know why it's different, but the, the names that I recognize – I'll add tally points to your to your um, total when I get back to the computer. So I appreciate y'all for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. This is Coach Evan signing out with our first questions from subs, I guess. Peace, y'all.